Wake up! I'm Doug and this is the Taste and Sensibility Channel. And today we're at coffee episode number 31 where we're looking at coffee and spirits. So we'll have a few coffee liqueurs, we'll have a few other liqueurs that we dump into coffee. We'll have a couple of cocktails and this is just dumping whiskey into coffee right here. This is how we're starting out. So if you've been enjoying all the coffee videos we've been doing and reviews and stupid things we've been doing out in the world, then please give this video a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Click that bell to get notified when the new videos come out. Leave us a comment or a question down below and pay attention when I tell you things about coffee. So I've made a pot of my automatic drip single origin coffee. I think this was Ethiopian and I have poured eight ounces of each one into these mugs. And now I have three whiskeys. I have Elijah Craig small batch bourbon from the United States. And here's an ounce and I am dumping it in the coffee there. And here we have monkey shoulder blended scotch whiskey. So it's a mixture of three different or was the last I knew of three different malts. So it's going in, in the coffee. These coffees have been sitting out for five minutes just to have them not so hot. And here we have Bushmills Black Bush Irish Whiskey, which is a little upgrade from the regular Bushmills. And it's spent some time and some sherry or some of it has. So it's just got a little more flavor. That's what I have around the house. Push mills is good, but this is better. So I'm going to go through and taste these and see if it's an improvement for the coffee or for the whiskey to dump it in and what's the mixture like. So I'm getting, huh, I'm getting oaky notes right off the bat from this uh, coffee with uh, Elijah Craig. Don't get alcohol, but I get oak. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Tell you what, I'm going to do a little stir. And we're not counting the drop of sticks of the spoon. Just to get a mix in. So the coffee has cooled off a little bit, so it wasn't exactly brewing temperature. It's been sitting around five or six minutes. It cooled off a little more, I'm sure, when I dumped in the whiskey. Wow. That's interesting. A little vapory and ethanol y from the alcohol, but the. And bourbon's really taking over the coffee. Oak. Not a lot of sweetness, not cherry notes or caramel notes. Maybe a few of the rye spices. So that's a really odd combination just to taste rye spice and oak in a, a coffee. So I would say don't do that unless you check it out ahead of time. You might find a bourbon that goes well with coffee, but yeah, it's drinkable, but it's not an enhancement to the coffee and I'd rather drink the ounce of bourbon by itself. So now moving on to the monkey shoulder, scotch malt whiskey. It's a blend of three different ones. And I usually, I really like malt whiskey. A little bit vapory. This is 47% ABV. This is 43% ABV. This is 40% ABV. So we're going down, I have done this in the backwards order of course. This is not as vapory and ethanol as this one is. And the malt really seems compatible. It is sliding right in there flavor-wise. I'm not getting wood notes. I'm getting a nice Swedish cereal-y maltiness. There's some malt and there's some cereal. Barley is a pretty soft grain. So if you're used to eating corn or oats or wheat cereals, Barley is just a little bit softer in the flavor area. Its flavor game is just softer, nicer, gentler. 
And I'm getting some of those notes. It is malty and just the lightest little bit away. And it is just a little bit malty. And so that goes. That's uh, compatible with this coffee. This was like sticking out in an opposite direction. These two are aligned and going together. So this one I like. So I say this is a thumbs up. Now moving on to the Irish whiskey, Bush Mills, Bush Bl Black Bush. <sighs> Not real vapory on the nose. Kind of normal coffee notes going off. Ooh, that's good. There's uh, not any maltiness that I detect, but there's a kind of a sharper wake up note that gets you, gets your attention. I'm not sure if everyone would like it. Might be some of the sherry influence. It's hard to say, but I'm, this is getting along with the coffee okay. So black brush goes with coffee without any additional sweetener or ingredients. So we're going to be doing a, a, an Irish coffee with a more with a, a sweetener and whipped cream and stuff. But this is just showing how whiskeys go with the coffee. So bourbon is not the first thing I would go to, but these two work out well. Okay, so that was a simple experiment. We can move on to the next one. So we're here now to do Irish coffee. And I got this version from Greg at How To Drink. So I'll put a link to his channel down below and to this particular video that gave me this. And he'll just say he got from somebody else. So what does it take? Well, I have some whipped cream here in my unsightly uh, KitchenAid mixing, stand mixing bowl. I have Jameson Black Barrel Irish Whiskey. The regular Jameson is fine for this sort of thing, but this has a little bit more flavor and uh, I just like it better. So that's what I have on my shelf. I have a little simple syrup. It's homemade from a Demerara or Terminado sugar. And I have some whole nutmeg and a plainer, greater thing to make sawdust. And I have some of my wonderful single origin coffee that I make all the time and drink every day. So what we're going to do is, huh, huh. I already don't have the equipment. So the way to do this is to get one ounce of Irish whiskey of your choice. 30 milliliters, one ounce, about the same. Whiskey people will say 30 milliliters is better because it's more. So there's the Irish whiskey. Then just to change units. We will do 15 milliliters of simple syrup. There, no reason to be consistent. Okay, that's not going to get back on, but simple syrup. You can go a little bit more if you like sweeter. You can go a little bit less if you like less sweet. And a lot of times you just eyeball the amount of coffee that goes in, but just to follow Greg's recipe, I'm going to pour 3.5 ounces. Oh, another unit change. This is uh, a couple of millimeters above the 3.5 mark. But there's the coffee. Yeah, that fits this Irish coffee mug or hot toddy mug very well. Then the top is a little bit of whipped cream. So I don't know if I can get this off. I probably made the whipped cream too stiff. And you probably want to use very lightly whipped cream so it'll relax and flow and look like you didn't stress over it. But the way this is going to be with very stiff whipped cream, it looks like some kind of avant-garde art project and people will not know what to make of it. But Okay, that's probably enough. Mm. Very lightly sweetened with 
couple teaspoons of sugar in a cup of cream. And the last thing, last thing here is a little nutmeg on top. Just grace out. Give it a little color and interest, and you will certainly smell it when you're drinking. So, nutmeg is a wonderful tasty nut, nosy nut for lots of whiskeys and other spirits. And that is a, a smell that goes right up in your nose. So, there it is Irish coffee from Greg at How to Drink. Wow, that, oh man. That's all that's going on there. It looks real simple. Simple ingredients, but the coffee is there. It tastes of whiskey, which is a good mix. Yeah, the whipped cream works with that perfectly, of course. It's a little bit of, uh, of vapors from the whiskey. And then with the cream mixing in and the nutmeg. Oh wow, uh, it's wonderful. So, perfect, that's why we do this. And uh, Greg's exactly right on about this being a great Irish coffee recipe, so cheers. So this part of Coffee and Spirits is featuring liqueurs. So here we have the famous Bailey's Irish Cream. Here we have the less famous Buffalo Trace Bourbon Cream. And then we have a famous liqueur that's based on the scotch and heather honey called Drambuie from Scotland, from the Isle of Skye. So I have some coffee that I brewed from my Kenya AA, my Peru that I roasted. I'm trying to get rid of those things and use them up. And I used one third of a Starbucks Pike Place. So one third, one third, one third. And then I've poured eight ounces, eight fluid ounces, one cup into each of these cups. And of the liqueurs, I've got one and a half ounces and a little visual indicator to show you how creamy the Irish cream is. So Bailey's is fam fairly famous for being in all sorts of drinks and people like it. It's creamy I and mean, smells like ice cream. It must be a lot of vanilla. It's sweet. So dumping it in. I caught, man, didn't bring a spoon again. I am so unprepared. So disorganized. So the Bailey's is 17% alcohol by volume. I'll just go ahead and taste this one and not mess with the others. Definitely sweet, creamy, brings that Bailey's flavor. And I'm not sure what the main component is besides vanilla and cream. There's some sort of spicing, spicing, some sort of other flavor. But that ratio works out great. And this is uh, good stuff. This would be dangerous to drink. You definitely have to limit yourself because it is tasty. It goes, the sweetness goes, the cream goes, and the extra Bailey's thing. Hit, hit. Recommend, recommend. So people are fairly familiar with Bailey's and how it tastes in all sorts of different drinks. And lots of them feature cream. Or chocolate or other things that go well with those flavors and man this thing goes well with coffee there uh, i don't need to drink the whole thing next up is buffalo trace distilleries bourbon cream which is 15 percent alcohol by volume made with kentucky straight bourbon whiskey and it says refrigerate after opening so you may see a little fog mist condensation on the outside of this thing since it's been in the refrigerator since it's always open around my house and it looks about the same a little tad lighter than the brown of the baileys and the taste 
is a, a different kind of sweetness. It's missing the extra, that Irish thing. It's missing the spicing and lots of vanilla in the Baileys, I think. And what I do get is consistent with bourbon. There's kind of a corn sweetness and uh, maybe an oakiness. They formulated this to bring out those things. So in it goes. So it's really just a hint of the bourbon flavor. It's not overtly bourbony. You just get notes of the stuff that's in there. And I find this all over the place for about 20 bucks a bottle. When you can find it. Comes and goes. Get a creaminess on the nose. Not sure what the other aromas are. Coffee's pretty hot. This cooled it down some since this was refrigerated. The others aren't. So let's drink. Oh, it's not as loud as the Baileys. It's not as classic as the Baileys, but it is a good combination. The creaminess works fine in the coffee. The bourbon notes are just uh, diluted. They're fainter. I'm not sure what other spices or flavorings go in there to make the bourbon cream. I usually just drink this plain on the ice. It comes out of the refrigerator. Poured over ice, it doesn't change much. It melts slowly. So I like it that way, but I sure don't do it in coffee much. And I could, and I'd like it. But I'm usually done with coffee at 8, 9, 10 in the morning. So it just, opportunity doesn't come up much. So good flavor, very compatible, not nearly as loud or uh, has a much smaller presence than the Baileys does because of the prominent flavors of the Baileys by itself or in anything. This is much more muted, but very compatible with the coffee. Now the third thing here is a little more of an oddball. This is a scotch whiskey, probably a single malt combined with heather honey and some spices. And it's got lots of flavors that cover up the scotch, cover up the maltiness of the scotch whiskey. And the spices are probably the last thing. It's very sweet. It's very thick and syrupy. When you see it pour, when you see it on the edge of the glass, you go, yeah, it's full of alcohol. This is 40% ABV. So this is like a whiskey with regards to alcoholic strength. And then lots of honey and it ends up being real syrupy. And then the spices are very prominent. Spices, 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 baking spices going into this recipe. So I try to dump it in there hard to make it uh, stir. Let's get a little taste. Oh, very alcoholic, uh, very sweet from the honey. And then the spices are, and I don't know what spices they are, but baking spices that are loud and pronounced. I've got two bottles here because this was my older bottle. This is what I emptied to uh, <laughs> do some of my testing and tasting. It's got an old fashioned, older fashioned label, an embossed brown bottle. And I think they just updated or refreshed or modernized the packaging recently. So this was hanging around for a few years. And this was hanging around for a few years waiting for me to open it. So you might see either one on the shelf. Oh man, the spices jump out. First thing on the nose here. Oh, much more alcoholic. Big puff of uh, alcohol vapors up there. This is easily more than twice the strength of either of these two. So very aromatic in that sense. But the spices are interesting and not like anything I've ever had in a coffee drink before. So it's probably not for everybody. I don't, the sweetness of the honey works very well with the coffee. That's a fine sweetener. But the spicing is odd. If you don't like it in the 
neat drank beauty. You probably won't like it in the coffee. But it's an odd combination of spices you won't find in many coffee drinks. So I like it. I wouldn't, you know, might only do it two or three times a year. So I'm getting along with it, but I'm pretty sure it's not for everybody. So check it out when you come across a bottle at someone's house, or if you got a bottle, you can give it a try. But I wouldn't go out and buy it just to put it in coffee. Okay, so that'll wrap up the liqueurs. Okay, so here I am to show you an espresso martini, and this version comes from Karen Devine of Behind the Bar. She's a Scot transplanted to Melbourne, Australia. And I really like the way she does a lot of things. She take, has a different take on some things and uh, is a good teacher. So I have a big cup of ice. I have espresso I just pulled from my Breville Barista Express. And I use Black Pearl Espresso from Orleans Coffee, a local roaster around here. I've got a Hawthorne strainer, a fine strainer, simple syrup that's homemade, a lemon Tito's handmade vodka, been in the freezer and St. George Nola coffee liqueur. So that's from uh, St. George Distillery in uh, California. So as Kara often teaches, or always teaches, you should be getting your garnish or finish first. And this is not really a garnish, but it is a finishing step to express a little lemon oil over the top of the finished espresso martini. So, there's a little piece of the lemon ready to go. So it's, um, it's not sitting around on the ice getting diluted and melted as I mess around with that at the end. And now we're here to start in with uh, 45 milliliters of vodka. This is cold and keeping it in the freezer helps cold drinks like this. And the next thing is 30 mils of espresso. So let's see if I can pour this without spilling. Almost. Oh, what a mess. Okay, 30 milliliters of the espresso. And that's the warmest thing in this mix, I think. I tried to do it a little ahead of time, let it cool off, and we will see. Next thing, 20 milliliters of the liqueur. So I'll use the same one. Just go into the 20 mark, and this will clean out some of the coffee. A lot of solids in there. And the crema. Okay. And the last thing that's an ingredient is uh, some simple syrup. I made this is homemade, and Kara recommends a vanilla syrup, which you make by putting a vanilla pod into some of this overnight. And I didn't have time, so I put a drop of vanilla extract. So it's real vanilla and nothing all. Good combination, uh, but it's a cheat. So some of it will make it sway into the drink, and you don't really taste it, I don't think. But okay, there's simple syrup with the vanilla cheat. One or two drops is plenty. It's not a note, it just ties things together. So now that everything's in here, I'm going to add all the ice will fit. All the ice you can, don't worry about diluting it, worry about making it cold as fast as you can. The colder it gets, then the less dilution will take place later on. So let's see if we can, oh yeah, I got a seal there. So shake it as hard and as fast as you can. So your hands can't stand it. It's so cold. So what we've done there is take all the liquid down below the to the ice temperature, which is very cold from a freezer. Minus 30, minus 20 C, minus 20 F. It's cold, and we just made that liquid cold, and it doesn't freeze at normal water freezing temperature. 
freezes much cooler because much colder because of the ethanol, sugar, or coffee solids. Now, ideally, the coop would be chilled, but I am I do good just to get the ingredients together. So let's pour this in and through a fine strainer and see what it looks like. But I hear lots of ice chips that aren't going in. Oh, very nice. Oh, I've been drinking so much espresso, I'm nervous and jittery. I'm jittery and shaky. Okay, I guess I better settle for that. But quite a foamy one. Quite a respectable head on top of that one. And then it's very common to do a three bean garnish, but uh, it's just waste coffee beans. Someone eats the things, I don't think. And now my little oil squirt, spray, spritz. Kara always has a wonderful B-roll camera of this going in perfectly on every drink. When she does it, and a little bit's happening. Okay. Boop. Let's see what it's like. Oh wow, lemon's a nice note with the coffee. Lemon and coffee. Sounds like an odd combination, but it works. Things mostly on the nose. Oh, very cold, refreshing. Wow, good jolt of coffee flavor. The espresso. The espresso is there. Good flavor, not too sweet. The syrup was limited and the sweetness of the St. George's coffee liqueur is limited. But a good punch of coffee flavor from the liqueur and the espresso. So there's the espresso martini. Link to Kara and her channel down below. Okay, in this segment of coffee and spirits, we're looking at a variety of coffee liqueurs. So they range in sweetness, they range in coffee intensity. So we will just go down the list and see what we find here. I'll describe what I'm coming across. So Kahlua is very famous. It says rum and coffee liqueur, 20% alcohol, product of Mexico. 100% Arabica coffee and sugarcane rum creates dark intensity, blah, 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 blah. So my bottle's getting kind of low. So maybe it's time to be finishing this off. So I'm going to pour a little bit and taste it and tell you what I find in there. So standard Kahlua. On the nose, there's a little coffee note, a little alcohol. Maybe a little vanilla on the nose. Yeah, it's a pretty attractive nose. Makes you curious about what it tastes like. Yeah, the coffee is pretty deep and rich smelling once you get, once you find it and connect to it. Okay. Oh, pretty sweet. Sweet, uh, definitely coffee. Kind of a little vanilla in the background tying everything together. It's interesting, it's good. You know right away it's coffee and pretty sweet. Oh, but the coffee is kind of, kind of weak overall in the, in the mix of things. Okay, so that would be popular, sweet, and not too strong of a coffee flavor and no, and certainly no uh, bitterness on the finish or anything objectionable from the coffee. Okay, the next one is Tia Maria, which is Italian. Blah, 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 26.5% alcohol by volume. Ooh, top's a little sticky, cap's sticky coming off. On the nose, oh, coffee's a little stronger than the Kahlua. 
maybe a tad darker. I'm not picking up sweet or much vanilla on the nose. I'll taste. Oh, pretty sweet. And the coffee is not really, the intensity of the coffee flavor is not more than Kahlua. It might be a notch darker or a notch stronger, but not both. Something gives me the impression it's a little stronger. Maybe vanilla on the nose, but I don't get a lot on the palate. The impression is it's equally as sweet as Kahlua. It's kind of a cooling, minty, menthol sensation on the end. But certainly not a mint flavor. Hmm. Okay, so those are very similar, I'd say. Not Terribly different. Okay, mouth, mouth rinse. Okay, next one up is Gallus or Galus. Also 26.5% ABV. And this one is Brazilian. I guessed, I, I guessed Irish at first, but it is not. You read the back of the label and it says Brazilian. So I'm pouring a bit in this tallest bottle of the set. Very elegant, understated label. Gold foil, picture of coffee beans, in the background of very simple labeling. It smells sweeter or grainier or more, more components to it. It's not just coffee. Maybe the vanilla is stronger. That's, that's what that is. More vanilla on the nose than either of the other two. Oh, sweet, sweet. Extra, extra notes like a grain, a sweetness, a, a marshmallow. A fluffy marshmallow cream note. So sweet. Not terribly intense coffee flavor, and then other flavors, vanilla and marshmallowy stuff. So I do very little with cocktails. I don't know. I know kind of what kinds of things these go in. So these would be good in cream drinks or cream and milk things. And this would go right along with it, but. It's kind of a surprise when you taste it by itself. Get this big, bold marshmallow note. And I like marshmallows, so it wouldn't throw me off, but it's a little different than the others. Now I'm moving on over here to this St. George Nola Coffee Liqueur from St. George Distillery in San Francisco area of California. Oh, this is... Better be carefully poured from this bottle. So the liquid is thin. Some of these have a kind of a syrupy consistency. <laughs> Maybe telling you how much sugar they have. Ooh, there's sediment in this one. I should have mixed it up before I poured it. I'll add a little more just to get the full sediment treatment. Just in case anything important is in that. Settling at the bottom, so it's like coffee solids are really in there. So this bottle is uh, a lot of the same labeling as other things from St. George Distillery. You know, they have gins and uh, malts, malt whiskeys. Interesting emblem here, it might supposed to be San Francisco. It might supposed to be New Orleans. And then a lot of Verbiage on the sides saying that they use Ethiopian Yergachev coffee for the liqueur. So 
they're a craft distillery and they, they probably put the same kind of care into this thing that they put in their other spirits. Oh wow. The coffee aroma is way more intense than these guys. There's more coffee punch in this. I don't pick up sweetness. I don't pick up vanilla. Hmm. Okay. Oh yeah, that's intense. Black coffee. Maybe the slightest bit of sweetness in there, but black coffee, maybe even a bitter finish on the coffee. It's just a no, it's not off-putting. It's not a fault. <clears throat> Did I put chicory in this? Yes. <laughs> That's the next next thing if I kept reading. Ethiopian Yerga Czech coffee, French chicory root, Madagascar vanilla, and organic cane sugar. And I don't get much sugar or vanilla on the flavor. And I thought the uh, bitterness of the finish was a coffee note, but maybe it's chicory. Do I get the other herbal vegetable stuff from the chicory? There's a little bit of it up front. So this is good. This is what you would be looking for if you're after a, a less sweet liqueur for some sort of drink or a particular purpose. So this is good. This is the first one that's really different. Okay, this one is different. This is different in a different way. Next, we have a newer product in the world. This has been out maybe a year, maybe less. Jameson Cold Brew. And they don't call it a liqueur. They call it Jameson Irish Whiskey infused with natural cold brew coffee flavor. So it's a 30% ABV. Best enjoyed chilled over ice or in a cocktail. I think it's thin and watery from what I remember. Yeah, it's like water. Easy to see through. I guess most of them are transparent and not too thick. Oh wow, yeah, the smell is like a whiskey. Whiskey plus coffee. Irish whiskeys are light on the nose, light on the palate usually. So it says whiskey notes and uh, coffee notes. Oh wow, it's not sweet. All the sweetness comes from the whiskey and the coffee's definitely there, it's good. This would be an interesting base to do things with or to add some coffee flavor to things. Okay, now they're not sweet. I didn't know I put these together on the same size as but uh, that's pretty good. Next thing we have here is an Italian liqueur called Galliano Ristretto and it is 30% alcohol by volume. Well, labeling the front label is in Italian so we'll go to the little card. Ristretto question mark a very intense shot of espresso. Galliano unleashes the power of a perfectly made ristretto, a concentrated and short espresso adored by Italians. Best Arabica and Robusta coffees are infused to capture its essence. Strong, invigorating, black and brown hue, the aromatic depth and balance of Galliano is a dynamic coffee twist. So usual marketing type stuff, but they tell you that their coffees are, as Italian espressos usually are, a mix of Arabica and Robusta, which are chosen for their taste qualities. It's not like they're looking for cheap Robusta, they're looking for good Robusta to make their espresso earthier and richer. Ooh, this might be the darkest of the liquids so far. <laughs> Ooh, yes, something is strong. 
What is it? Is it the coffee or the something else? I didn't recognize it as coffee necessarily on first nosing. And it's not coffee in the sense of all these other, other things. It's dark. It's earthy. And a different kind of coffee flavor. More spicy, like baking spices, more influence of baking spices. Mmm. Wow, maybe even anise or licorice. Complicated with lots of notes, lots of notes. Anise might be one of them. There's a minty, menthol, whoosh sort of thing going on in my mouth. And a variety of baking spices in such a mixture, it's hard to tease them all apart. And the coffee is just one of the notes. Wow. Okay, most different, most different. This is the oddball in the bunch. And then finally, the end of the big bottles. Man, I got a sticky side. I should have should have cleaned it off before I brought it. I'll just ignore it. Cantera Negra Cafe, coffee liqueur made with 100% agave spirit. Made in Mexico, 40 proof. 20% ABV. Gotta keep remember what scale I'm on. And this is very dark. Can't see through it, but it's very uh, deep cross section. It's in non colored glass. Also, very dark liquid. Can't see through that. So, the spirit base here is tequila. So, some have been rum, some have been whiskey. This one might be cachaca based, but I didn't taste those notes. So it's hard to say. If they don't tell you, you have to use your senses to find out. Oh wow, okay. Coffee and sweet. I'm getting almost a syrupy nose along with the coffee nuts. Coffee's pretty, pretty in your face with this one. Oh, sweet. Might be the sweetest one in the bunch. And the coffee is not strong on the palate. So, a great bottle, weak flavor. If you like sweet, you won't have to put in your simple syrups and things into your cocktails because it's already in there. <sighs> yeah, the coffee flavor is taking a back seat here. And sweet, sweet, sweet. Is there any other notes? Maybe some vanilla. Okay, don't need to finish that. I was worried about all the alcohol I was drinking from these, but now I'm worried more about the sugar I'm drinking from these. Okay, mouth rinsing onto the little minis here in front. First one we're going for is Cafe Bravo. When tiny print, 21% alcohol, imported product of Mexico. Just gotta read the label, see if they tell you what it's made of. No. Okay, so I bought a couple of these on a recent trip to Texas where I see all sorts of different things in the liquor stores than I do around here in New Orleans. So I bought a couple of the minis, but I have not yet finished the first taster I got. So we'll just try Cafe Bravo from the open bottle. I remember these being kind of sweet. It looks a little syrupy and thick. Not a heavy coffee nut on the nose. I 
That's pretty good uh, punch of flavor on the palate, but it's also sweet. It is syrupy. And I don't know anything about the, the makeup. So it's a, like most of these things. So this was different because you could tell the whiskey was the base and the, the highest ABV. But these guys, nope, not the highest ABV. So these guys were the standouts taste-wise or ingredient-wise or what you get on your palate. This was probably next, just do the whiskey notes and everything else is mostly sweet. And this is right in there with the sweet ones. Next one is Cafe Granita, but I found two <laughs> different label art versions of the minis, but it's the same stuff. Cafe Granita, 21% alcohol, coffee liqueur, and same origin, same company headquarters. The traditional spirit, savor the rich essence of Mexican coffee and our award-winning semi-sweet smooth body liqueur. Okay, Cafe Granita. Into my fast, fanciest tasting glass. Metal cap. Plastic bottle. Mmm. Nice coffee aroma, dark and rich. Can't really get sweet on the nose, don't get much alcohol. But I get the coffee. As soon as it hit my palate, I could tell it was syrupy inconsistency, but then strike me as especially sweet, but it's coffee full. I put it in the category of sweet liqueurs, but it's got, it may have the strongest coffee flavor. Cafe Granita. Might even be a fruity note. Hmm. I'm trying to think of what it would be. Might be some sort of berry, a raspberry. Blackberry sort of note in here. It reminded me at first of the marshmallowy note I got here on the Gallus. But it, a little more tasting and it definitely popped out as a berry. So Cafe Granita might be the favorite ones of the sweet ones. My favorite of the sweet ones. I've got more here to taste. So the Cafe Granita is pretty good for the sweet ones. St. George is really good for the not sweet wine. This is still a mystery. What's going on? I didn't get it. I don't understand it. And the Jameson cold brew is also pretty interesting, although not a normal liqueur. So that'll wrap up the uh, liqueur section of this video. Ah, so you're back from that really long coffee liqueur clip. Yeah, there's a lot in there, but it was uh, fun to do. So this is the next to the last coffee video in this series of uh, 32 episodes on all things coffee. So we've kind of taken a trip around the world for single origin coffees. We've gone into uh, grocery stores to look for the best things we can find. We've gone to local coffee roasters and local coffee houses. And next episode, the last episode, is going to be coffee in cuisine. How do we use it in food? What's coffee doing in our uh, food that we eat? It tends to be kind of desserty, creamy goes with those kinds of things. So again, please like and subscribe, leave comments, leave questions, and watch for that last coffee video. And then we're moving into the Whiskey Advent calendar in December. It'll be a whole set of Scotch Malt whiskeys at cast strength by independent bottlers. And I won't have any idea what any of the things are. And even after I read the label, I won't have any idea what any of the things are. So, come back and see that every day in December up through the 25th. 
Cheers.